Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about aspects of applied medical anthropology with Carrie here. Um, to start with, could you give me a quick introduction to the module? Absolutely. Uh, aspects of applied medical anthropology is a module that tries to give students the skills to use and apply critical medical anthropology perspectives to contemporary global and public health problems. So we do this through a variety of topics from obesity to cross-border healthcare to COVID to population aging. And the goal is to try to give students a sense of the possibilities, but also the limitations of applying uh, anthropology to contemporary issues. Um, thank you. So this year you added a week on race inequalities during COVID. Could you briefly go over the material for that topic? Yes. So this week was really inspired by students who, um, inspired by the Black Lives Matter protests, came to the department and asked a bunch of the lecturers to really try to integrate um, more uh, efforts to decolonize our curriculum, but also um, to have our classes really speak to the effects of racism in the world today. So uh, I wanted to integrate a week on COVID, but I also wanted to integrate um, a week on racism and the health effects of racism. And I thought it would be interesting to combine the two. Um, and uh, the week really thinks about the effect of racism on the experience of COVID. And we know in the UK that people from Bain communities um, are not even, they're more likely both to transmit COVID, um, uh, they're also more likely to die from COVID-19. So there have been all sorts of people who have been asking, well, why is this the case? Uh, and there are several kind of scientific and medical literatures that suggest that it's because particular racialized groups um, are genetically predisposed to being vulnerable to the virus. And the literature for this week that we engaged with in the module um, is really trying to problematize that point of view. Um, so not only did we learn that there's more genetic variation within racial groups um, than there is across racial groups, um, but we also learned that genetics um, aren't meaningful alone, that they exist in social environments. So the week was trying to help students understand um, how racism and the ways in which certain racialized groups are degraded and subjugated socially um, really put some groups uh, in a more vulnerable position during COVID-19. For example, we know BAME communities uh, are working on the front lines more than their white counterparts. So they're probably going to be transmitting the virus um, often, um, a lot more often. We know that they rely on public transport more than their white counterparts. Uh, we also looked at how a lot of nurses in the NHS from BAME communities um, really struggled to access proper PPE in the beginning of the pandemic. So all of these um, uh, really kind of uh, racialized social effects um, have made BAME communities um, more vulnerable to the disease. So it's trying to understand the social factors that make us biologically vulnerable, in particular racialized groups. Yeah, I really like how the department adapts the curriculum every year um, to ongoing events. That's, that's always really helpful. So during the course, we learned that it would be useful to consider obesity as a communicable disease, even though it's not infectious. Could you elaborate on why that is? Yes. Yeah, so um, one of the things that medical anthropologists have been really interested in is the rise in chronic diseases globally. And as you say, chronic diseases aren't infectious. Um, they're not like viruses, um, but they are communicable. And what do anthropologists mean by that? Um, well, there are lots of social factors um, that are emerging globally that are kind of um, becoming more socially contagious. Uh, we can see, for example, the global food economy is making highly processed food uh, more and more accessible to greater portions of the world. Um, we also know that one of the huge determinants of obesity and diabetes um, is social inequality. And social inequality is becoming um, a really difficult issue worldwide. And 
we know that this is not something that only low and middle income countries deal with. It's also something that high income countries deal with. And we look at the United States, their obesity and diabetes rates are rocket high. Um, and so it's really trying to help students understand that, for example, people who are uh, really struggling with inequality, with precarity, who are having to work five jobs, they're going to find it difficult to um, cook really kind of nutritious meals to exercise and to even access food that would be nutritious for them. Um, so really trying to understand the kind of social context that makes people um, more vulnerable to um, having obesity and diabetes. Um, and those social factors uh, really contribute to, to that spread. As these social factors are becoming more prevalent across the world, so too are these conditions. Thank you. Uh, one of the assignments for this course was for students to write an advocacy letter. I really enjoyed writing mine and I was wondering if you could go over the reasons behind that choice of assignment. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I was actually inspired by two of my favorite anthropologists, um, one of whom, Emily Yates Dorr, uh, wrote about the advocacy letter assessment on a really great medical anthropology blog. And the advocacy letter assessment is uh, a opportunity for students to apply their anthropological knowledge to a health issue that they care about and to really advocate for some kind of change around that health issue. And in the letter, they have to find somebody to send this kind of um, advocated change to, to. So we've had students send them to MPs, uh, to people who work in the WHO. Um, and really the kind of motivation for this assessment was um, to not only give students the chance to do what the module is supposed to do, which is to apply this anthropological perspective to these health issues, but to do it in a way that might really create change. Um, I know lots of the students who've been in this module have actually sent their letters, uh, and I'm gonna be really curious to see what comes from that. I haven't sent mine out yet, but- um, You yeah. should. <laughs> Can you give an example of an advocacy letter from a student that you think captured the essence of the module? Yeah, there were so many more. Um, I mean, they were, it was really inspiring. I mean, we always enjoy reading these essays because we see what students have learned and, and what they're really kind of, um, what kinds of concepts they're struggling with or find meaningful. But this assessment, reading these letters was really powerful. Um, partly because so many students, it was clear that what they were writing about really meant a lot to them. So I had student, a student write about um, bettering HIV AIDS education here in the UK, a student who was arguing for cannabis use during cancer treatments, um, a student arguing um, uh, for uh, the kind of mal effects of privatization of the NHS um, and their experience with that. And it was really a range of extraordinary topics that students really integrated both kind of personal experience, but also really critical anthropological perspectives. Um, and it, it was a, a, a very powerful mix. Thanks. <laughs> to finish off, um, who do you think should take this course and why? Oh, gosh. Well, it's such a pleasure to teach this class because there's so many students that come to it. I think I've said this to you, Laura. Um, really hoping to reflect on how they can make what they've learned in their anthropology degree meaningful in the world. Um, and this is often kind of third year students who have learned all of these skills, who are really kind of moved by anthropology and are asking themselves what next. And I think this course helps students really grapple with those questions. You know, how can we put to use these skills that we've learned in our degree? Um, how can anthropology be made meaningful? Um, and not just be made meaningful, but really catalyze important and needed change. And so the module, I think, sometimes encourages students to ask these questions. Um, you get to ask these questions with other kind of similar minded people who are really hoping to do something meaningful with their degree. Um, and it's a real privilege to teach. Um, and I think students do get um, a, a lot of enjoyment out of learning how to do this, in particular around health issues, but more broadly reflecting on this question of application in anthropology. 
Yeah, it is quite hard to figure out um, how to apply anthropology and even how to explain how you apply your degree to other people as well. So this course has been really helpful, especially for the advocacy letter. I made my mom read mine as well. Um, so she can understand what type of changes um, medical anthropology and anthropology in general could advocate for and how that happens. Um, obviously, you know, depends on whether the person will read the letter and will actually do something about it. But yeah, it's been a, it's been an absolutely amazing course and, um, and everyone's loved it as well. So yeah, I really recommend this course to anyone watching this video. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Laura.